Borada, bonjour, good morning everybody. Uh, I thought I'd do a little video today about fitting auxiliary lights to the bike. It's something I've been concerned about for some time, being a little bit invisible. When I'm out with my mates, they've usually got these bright LED lights and uh, they've said to me, Dave, we can't see you. So what I've done is put uh, an LED headlight in the bike, uh, which might fail the MOT. So when it goes through the MOT, I'm going to change it back to a halogen and then <laughs> put it straight back to the LED when I've uh, got a pass. However, I wanted auxiliary lights like you often see on adventure bikes on uh, the frames which go around the engine. Now, my bike is a road bike, so it was quite hard or more difficult to find mountain brackets to do that. Let me just show you the finished result. And you can see there, I found some brackets and the lights. And what I'm gonna do is show you how I wired it up. And I started from scratch. I mean, I've got a, a basic understanding of uh, electricity, but it really wasn't hard. What I didn't know is what tools and fittings were available out there. So let me just take you through that. Now, the first thing to do is find a switched live. What you don't want to do is put a switch on the handlebar that some idiot could turn on or, and, or even yourself and leave it switched on and flatten your battery. So what you need to do is find a switched live. So that is, um, which comes a live basis when you turn, turn the key. Now there's three ways you can do that. Um, how, what I've done on mine, I probably wouldn't do it the second time, but it's not a bad way. Um, I've taken off the side panel. Let me show you that. I found these connectors for the rear lights. When I pulled these connectors apart, I put a multimeter on there, played with the ignition switch, and when the ignition, ignition switch was on, these wires became live. So what I did, I actually, because there wasn't much slack in any of these wires. So what I did, I actually shaved off the insulation with a Stanley knife and soldered on my live feed, which you can see that red wire there. Now that is going to a relay, which I'll talk about in a minute. There's also two other ways to do it. If you're lucky enough, you might find a spare connector. I couldn't find one on this bike. If there is one, let me know. And the other way you can do it is to use uh, what they call um, a fuse tap, or same thing, a piggyback fuse holder. Let me just grab mine from uh, the case now. I'll show you what it looks like. There's plenty of videos on YouTube telling you how they work. Right, right basically, let's turn this around. Basically, go to your fuse box, find a switch live with your multimeter or a, a light probe, and you can get one of these. And if you see there, there's two sockets for fuses. One will contain the original socket of the circuit you're tapping into, and the next one will be for your accessory. If I'd known these things existed, which I didn't, I would have used this. This probably would have been an easier method to get that switch live. So there's the three methods, really. We've got uh, a spare connected, if you're lucky enough. Find a switch live like I did on this one, or use a fuse tap. You're going to need a relay. What a relay is, it's basically a switch. The switch on the handlebar activates the relay and the relay has got another switch which carries a bigger current. So the auxiliary lights run through the switch on the re on the um, switch contacts on the relay and the handlebar switch operates the relay with a low current. Uh, that sounds like mumbo jumbo. So what I'll do, I'll put up um, a diagram so you can see exactly how it works. When you buy a relay, I would recommend you get one with, um, this is a socket that plugs into the relay that's pre-wired. So it's very, very easy to tap into these. It's quite simple. The black and the red operate the relay, the coil in the relay, which is basically an electromagnet. And the other three wires are a switch, the different points of the switch. So when you throw the switch on the handlebar, which I got here from eBay, yeah, that actually activates the coil in the relay, which enables the current to flow through the thicker wires. And it's rated up to 40 amps, which is uh, more than overkill. So let me next uh, show you a diagram of how a relay works. Okay, let's talk through the relay wiring diagram. This is actually uh, the relay coil, the electromagnet. 
and this is the switch live. It's running through a fuse. That's the handlebar switch into the relay down to earth, which is the chassis. When this switch is activated, the relay throws this switch, which is the higher current switch. And then our circuit, we've got the earth, the battery, a fuse through the lights, and then the lights come on. So it's actually quite simple when you see it laid out like that. And as long as I think you follow it slowly and logically, you won't have a problem. Well, let's go through some of the uh, things that I use to join the wires up. You've got these simple crimp terminals. They'd probably be about my last choice. Uh, if you've got a simple crimp in pliers, always test that the wire doesn't come out. Uh, you might have a nice expensive crimp in pliers. I don't, so that should do a better joint. But I find these probably the worst of all the, the ways to join a wire. Uh, next way I would join a wire would be with uh, just soldering together. So this uh, solder. And a really good way of doing a butt joint to uh, join two wires together is to take one of these things. This is called a solder seal joint. A wire goes in each end and that uh, ring in the middle contains low melting point solder and the red rings are glue and the transparent piece of plastic is heat shrink. So you put your wires in and there's plenty of instruction on YouTube how to use them. Heat it up with a hot air gun the solder mounts and voila, you've got a mechanical and electrical joint and waterproof joint as the uh, solder seal melts. And I've done one here earlier, as they say in Blue Peter, that's what it looks like. And for belt and braces, I then get a piece of heat shrink, put it over the joint uh, just for added security because I'm a bit paranoid. Another type of connector are these here. These are WAGO connectors, I think that's how you pronounce it, W-A-G-O. They're only about, I think, 30 pence each. You can get them everywhere, including screw fix. What happens is these little orange levers can be priced up like so. The wire is then put in the hole and you close the lever and it makes a very strong joint. So if you've got to collect a, a load of wires in parallel, that's a really, really easy way to uh, work. They're designed for 12 volt and 240 volt. I didn't know these existed until I started doing this job and they are immensely useful. The other thing that's uh, around is um, <laughs> liquid electrical tape. It's basically a black goo, very fast setting mastic and it's a really easy way to uh, make electrical joints waterproof. Again, something else I found out while doing this little project. And for the bike itself, I bought cable as opposed to wire, so it's already sheathed. It's black, so it's easy to hide. I ran it behind the plastic, behind the radiator, down to these brackets, which are connected to the lights. So it was quite, it was actually quite straightforward. When I started doing it, I was a little bit daunted, but it really isn't that bad. And uh, there you can see an earth terminal where I've got them, all the negatives bolted to that bolt there, which is connected to the chassis. My positives, you can see, they're all taped up, so you can't actually see how I've jointed them because I say I'm a little bit paranoid, so everything is double insulated. And fused, of course, as well. That's pretty important that you put a fuse in there to stop any potential electrical fire if something goes wrong. Anyway, I hope that was of use to you. Although, before I go, I'll tell you what I can do is actually uh, show you the lights. Right, they're my LED side lights, and I'll just flip on the handlebar switch now. Now, this, of course, activates the relay which allows the relay switch to kick in the bigger current for these. And voila, there we go. And they are bright and they weren't even expensive. Uh, I think I paid £25 for the lights and £25 for the brackets around there because uh, I've seen other lights from a well-known manufacturer that cost hundreds of pounds and I'm not sure they're any better to be perfectly frank. Anyway, hope you found the video useful and I'll see you all next time. Ten off and out.